this is it. So it uses a T5 head, and it's got this hyperbolic head where you can hold down from the lateral walls and the apex of the screw and be able to mill, be able to mill from angulated screw channels. Now, the, what, what we perfected was, so, so we drew this screw in some software, we had a machine, we tested it, we drew our ExoCAD profiles, and we even drew the hyperdent template to be able to mill these things. Because what I wanted to do, in, in, a, in the marketplace, whenever you're milling these things, you get some really loose tolerances with milling, and I didn't want to have a screw going down a hall, you know. Um, what I wanted is a very tight tolerance. Now this is a very predictable milling profile for hyperdent. So we have a template generator that we created for this. So if you use this vortex screw and you import the vortex geometries into your hyperdent library, every time you take a full upper arch and you import it into hyperdent, those calculation tool paths to be able to mill it, it'll automatically recognize the screw and it already had pre-calculated tool paths. So the calculation times are gonna be faster and the results of your milling are gonna be tighter and better as long as you have the, the template generator. And we can provide that for you if you ever need, just reach out. If you're gonna mill in your, in your office or if you're gonna use work with a lab that uses these, most major labs have the template. If they don't, they can reach out to me and I'll give it to them. So we have three different screws. The 1.4, which is the Noble BioCompatible screw for these arches. The 1.6, when the, one, the only difference between the 1.4 and the 1.6 is the radius is 1 .1, 0 0.1 millimeters wider here and here. So 0 0.2 millimeters overall for a diameter. Um, and this is the Riddle Dental concept. They came out with the first one and um, and a couple of manufacturers got on the market and started using these. So you can also mill both of these for angulated screw channels, for direct multi abutment using tie base and direct and for uh, zirconium titate substructures. And we're coming out with a 1.72, which is the implant direct screw. This is soon to hit the market, hasn't yet fully. Again, this is a driver. So this is our T5 driver and this is our screw. And this is an angled tool path channel for a FP1 crown, so a single tooth crown. Um, this is our head. You can see it's a lobular shape and form. And you can see how it, the growth of it. So this is the apex of the screw, and these are the threads. And then this is the bottom of the head, so right here. And then you can see as it tapers out to get to the top part of this screw head, that's this outer diameter here. So you can see it's a gradual curve out, like a hyperbole. It goes underneath and then out. And this is how it holds down the lateral walls of the screw. Again, um, this is the T5 driver. So it's a ball-in T5 driver is used to torque these out. Very compatible, with, exactly compatible with the Megagen any ridge. Um, Noble, just to note, Noble BioCare is a T5.5 um, and Strom is actually a T6. So um, for those who, that need to know that information. This is the T5 driver, and this is the tight tolerance of that screw. And this is a very predictable, even with tool wear, you can predictably mill these angulated screw channels and direct channels. So this is a direct mill, and this is a angulated mill at 22 degrees. And you see it was 1.4 millimeters of material underneath the screw channel, thick enough um, to prevent fracture of your zirconium. Um, just a quick little chart to show you the all the different features of all the different screws in the market and we basically tried to research and figure out what was the best screw and that's what we came up with but we wanted to be able to mill direct to multi-unit abutment so your full zirconia arch will sit on this multi-unit abutment and this screw will tighten into the zirconia cause clamping force and preload to be able to tighten up this arch and you can see it can be milled at an angle and this screw can be used at an angle and it still unscrew this. It's a Torx head, that's all it is. I didn't invent the driver. It, I just used the Torx technology in the head of the screw to be able to develop this. Um, but um, what, I, what I did include is, so this, this driver is stainless steel and it's heat treated stainless steel. So it's, it's really very, very strong. But I did create a weak point on the driver. And the weak point is if, it, if you try to over torque the screw, sometimes you'll get screw fracture, right? Because the threads of these screws are only 0.4 millimeters, like it's gonna fracture. 
you can't over torque these things to 35 newton centimeters like you can with a 1.8 screw um, so what I did want to happen is somebody torque out this screw it fracture into the multi abutment you have this full upper arch that you've already delivered and it's catastrophic issues where you have to take out the upper arch take out the multi abutment replace the multi abutment replace the arch and then just have tons and tons and tons of issues so instead of the screw fracturing the driver will actually fracture if it it'll break at after 15 newton centimeters. It's so much easier to replace a $40 driver than a whole upper arch and a multi-unit abutment and all the components that go along with it. So just to, as a fail safe, these drivers will fracture or distort. Even heat treated stainless steel will uh, fracture. Um, then we also have the tie base interface where there's a lot of purists on the market that one angulated screw channel but still want to use a tie base and we have that option to be able to use these tie bases with angle corrections.